And anyway, the way that we filleted it and stuff and cooked it, there is seriously no gamey taste. At all. And this is the best Still good. Flavors of this meal are blowing my mind right now. So good, so good. Hey guys, this is Brian from Meat Factor Outdoors. Thanks for watching. Today's video is going to be on catfish. Catch, clean, and cook. As you can see here, this is the cook part. Stay tuned to the end so you can see how it gets to this point. And Step number one, catch a big catfish. Um, that's what we're gonna key on here, is catching a big catfish. So. You don't have to have a boat, although if you do this for a while, you're probably gonna wanna get a boat just because um, it's fun. Now you can see my John boat here, this thing's hauling butt. So next step, you're gonna want bait. Um, my favorite bait is a live bluegill. Um, hands down, to catch a big catfish is live bluegill. If you want to catch a flathead catfish, you wanna use a live bluegill. Um, you can also catch channel cats um, and things like that on bluegill live bluegill. And the other kind of bait is cut bait. You could take bluegill, shad, whatever, shrimp, you can you can use cut bait. It's dead fish and big channel cats like it, small channel, channel cats like it, turtles like it, um, but generally you can catch a pretty, usually a big catfish with a piece of cut bait. Typically cut bait is used early season when it's cold out because the fish's digestive system isn't quite ready for a live bluegill yet. So sometimes early season, yeah, even flatheads, you can catch them on cut bait when the water's real cold. Well, if you watch my channel a lot, you'll see I've been doing bank poles a lot recently. Um, so you can use bait, any of either, of either of those baits on bank poles. But before we get into that, I used to rod and reel fish a lot because I had a really good spot. You can see here, this is my buddy Tom. And me and him used to stand up on this wall and we used to nail flatheads all day long using live bluegill as bait. Here you can see we both caught a double in the same second. It was super awesome moment. If you guys want to watch that video, I'll put a link in the description below. You can see that whole video. Um, so yeah, all we used here to catch these flatheads was live, absolutely live bluegill. Um, now, back to the bank poles. Uh, this was a piece of cut bait, I do believe. And a uh, pretty nice size uh, channel cat uh, gets caught here. I need a net, guys. Who wants to send me a net? Let's go buy one. So, those are the different methods. Bank poles or rod and reel, either way, you can use live bait or cut bait. Um, I don't know if you noticed on that pole, I had a, I had a, a shallow bait and I had a deep bait. Um, so anyway, I'm just kind of showing you some of the some of the kind of fish that we've been catching here lately on bank poles. Uh, here's one from last year. I think uh, I think this is a good flathead. You see how that bank pole slowly bends down like that, like it almost has a freaking boat anchor on it. That's how you can tell you got a flathead on a bank pole. Same deal on a rod and reel though. I mean, they just want to go down. All right, time to butcher. We got back straps on a flathead here. We've got fillets on this flathead here. Do not forget that we have the belly meat on this flathead. The flathead has the most meat, hands down, uh, of any catfish. So this is the white steak prize meat fish. So once you get the fillet off, you're gonna cut right down the middle there. And the reason is so you can get rid of all the red meat easier. Cut that red meat off. Get, get it down looking like that. The 
the red part of the meat right there. You want to get as much of that as you can off. Um, I'm going to call this one good, but yeah, I'm losing a little bit of meat, but why? I have so much of it. Why, why would I settle for meat that tastes gamey or real fishy when I can have some meat that has zero game taste to it? So that's what you want to do. Now, here's a channel cat. This is the way I do them. And I'm getting every piece of meat off here other than the belly meat. So I start with taking the filet off uh, first there. And I come back and get the top part of the filet that's on top of the ribs, as you will see. So once I make that first cut, I just flip it over and I'm now filleting the meat off of the skin. So I want to come out with a, a nice piece of filet o fish. Um, you know, this is this is one way to do it. Everybody, if you are good at filleting fish already, please don't criticize. <laughs> and because every time I post a fish video, someone has a better way to do it. Everybody's an expert. That's fine. This is for someone that doesn't know how to do it. This is one way to do it. And yes, be responsible. Try to get every piece of meat off there that you can. Still pretty good. Look, there's not much left on that at all. All right, now we get to the cooking part of the catfish. I put the fillets in a bowl of water and I mix a little vinegar with it and let it soak in the fridge for a few hours. Um, some people put salt in there. It's basically it's just something that's gonna kind of draw the blood out of the out of the fillets. Um, not a necessary step, but I like to do it. Um, I I feel like it makes it taste just that much better. So anyhow, I got these uh, got these out. I've got three packages. We're gonna be grilling and frying. Got the old Weber grill. This thing's pretty sweet. Got this ash lever here. You can see what it's doing. It's cleaning out, cleaning out any of the old ash. So I'm just trying to let them get as unthawed as possible. Um, and actually, if you're going to do this the best, you would um, you let them actually dry out in room temperature for a little bit. But I'm also going to uh, fry a few up for uh, for the kids just in case they don't care for the baked fish. So what I'm going to be using for the fish I'm frying is a, a combination of a couple things. One, which I call it, which is like really the base, is uh, by Eastman Outdoors. It's the uh, seasoned fish coating, basically, and roasted garlic and butter. In my opinion, that's the best one. I don't even buy any of the other ones. So, use that, and still to me, that's a little bland. I like it to have some bold flavor. Um, so you can season it up yourself, or you uh, can make it with some of this Andes. Here's Andes Cajun, that's really good. All by itself, it's all right, but it's a little, sometimes it doesn't stick to the fish as well, whereas this stuff really coats the fish amazing, so I really like mixing the two. By the way, ceramic knives are amazing. Sharp, I got this for the wife a while back. Hey buddy, I'm cutting up some fish. I'm gonna make you some fish nuggets. Are you gonna eat some fish nuggets? Okay, not, oh, I gotta cook it first. I have to touch it. No, you can't touch it. But after I cook it, you can, okay? For frying up catfish, I like to cut it into nuggets or fish sticks. Um, for whatever reason, that just seems to be the absolute best way that I have found. Little nuggets or fish sticks. Then you just shake it up in the uh, the dry powder batter like I like you see me doing, and uh, throw her in hot oil. 
Okay, I've got some seasoning. The one I really have started to like for fish is called Buckshot. Um, I'll put a link to everything in the description below that I'm going to be using in the video as far as fish batter, seasonings. Um, I've got a pizza pan out there that's key to grilling this fish. Anyhow, um, I haven't really liked this on, on like deer meat and stuff as much as I really like it on fish. So as long as your seasoning is a rub or like a seasoning mix, then put it on liberally. Obviously you wouldn't want to put this much seasoned salt or something like that on it. You guys are gonna have to bear with me because I'm going back and forth. I'm cooking fried fish and I'm grilling fish at the same time. Okay, back outside and looks like the, the charcoal is just now getting done. This is the bottom part of the pizza pan. It's a heat shield. Back inside, it looks like the first batch of fried fish is ready. To finish it off, I use a little lemon pepper seasoning, and the kids know it because they start gathering around over the famous catfish nuggets. I don't like it. I love it. Love it. Back out at the grill, we've got the pizza pan on, everything's hot, and the fish is going on. All right, I got the rest of the catfish, uh, the fried catfish done. You can see it up here. Got it hiding in the microwave so the kids or grandpa doesn't eat it before supper. I like to look for any like fat or water or stuff like that coming out of the top of the catfish. Um, you can start to see, you can start to see some of it here and here. It's like white coming out. That's when you know it's looking good. Um, I can actually probably go ahead and flip this. You want to flip it before it gets too hard to flip. Like, see how it's, you can tell it's solidifying here. Be kind of careful with it. But, but look how the bottom is not burnt at all using this, using this, uh, this pan here. And these are super hot coals. One good thing about all this rain is, in the river coming up, is that uh, I think it encourages more fish to swim upstream further from the lake. Right, we're gonna take that small one off there. I say it's um, it's it's uh, it's done. Still got a ton of moisture in it. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer. You can see it's starting to come apart here a little bit. Definitely this guy over here. It's coming apart. Not sure, not sure how to say, how to tell you how long to cook it. Um, you're just gonna kinda have to watch it. It depends on the pieces. You see I've got those two from the smaller fish over there, they've been done a couple minutes and I just don't quite feel like these are ready yet. Oh nice, look at that. Just a little bit of chard on the bottom from that, from the grill grates. That is nice looking. Look at that. Like to eat. Grandpa likes to eat. Put some on my plate that I'm allowed. She doesn't like fish, by the way. She just ate that entire catfish fillet. Hunter, what do you think? From the field to the table. From the water to the table. Not from the field to the table. From the field to the table will be with the needle. Paxton, try one. Oh, you are eating it. <laughs> you like it? You like that big fishy? Mm. Uh, it's delicious!